Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. You know, last week we took a look at a new product from Sound Trucks. This week, though, we're going to be jumping across the pond to North Yorkshire in England to see what the folks at DCC Concepts have come up with. A brand new product from them that we're going to take a look at today and install on the module. So let's get started. Now these are the new DCC Concepts Cobalt Alpha Mimic Structure Lighting Kits. So that's what you'd be looking for if you go to the DCC Concepts website, and that's dccconcepts.com, and you can order directly from them. You can order from any of their dealers in the UK that carry these, and here in the US, uh, I've been told that Iron Planet Hobbies will be stocking these as soon as they can get a shipment from DCC Concepts. Basically what it is, it's a structure lighting kit that allows you to install lights in various structures on your layout and then turn them on and off remotely using accessory decoder commands on either a handheld throttle uh, such as the NCE or the Digitrax or any of the others that have the ability to control accessory decoders built in or you can use something like the Alpha Central uh, control panel that I previously showed you. And I'll put a link to the video that I did on that up here above me. So let's go ahead and pop these open and see what we've got. But first, this particular package here contains uh, a whole series of lights. There are 24 bright LEDs here that you use with it. And then there's a control uh, circuit board right here. So we'll take a look at that. This is an, ex uh, is an additional uh, packet of LEDs. So this contains 24 LEDs uh, in addition to the 24 that come with the original board. So there's a lot in here. Let me show you what comes with it. Okay, right here we have a package of red and black heat shrink tubing. And I'll tell you why you get that. They do provide that for you. So one thing they also include in addition to the shrink prep tubing are these red and black wires uh, with these small little JST type connectors on them. And then a bare end already uh, tinned on the other end. This is the circuit board that uh, you use in order to control the lights, to turn them on and off. Uh, it basically is uh, an accessory decoder. You program it for an accessory decoder address. And there are 12 of them here on the board and they they come with a left and a right because this board was originally designed to be used with their uh, control uh, panel kit that allows you to create control panels with LEDs to indicate uh, using a red or a green LED to indicate the direction through the switch that is thrown. But in this case, we're just going to be using it to uh, illuminate LEDs uh, inside of your structures. So we'll get into this a little bit more in a minute. These are the LEDs themselves. Like I said, there are 24 of these here and they have these little adhesive disc that they are mounted on. So you'll be able to peel these out and then mount them on the inside of your structure using the adhesive pad that's on the back of them. So what you can see is we've got this very small surface mount LED mounted here on the surface of this circuit board. And then there's this little sponge pad here on the back side. And underneath of this piece of paper is an adhesive pad. So that's going to hold it uh, against the wall or the ceiling, wherever you want to install it in your structure. So you'll be able to do that. As you can see, it comes with a fairly long wire. I think this is about, oh, 20 inches long, something on that order. And then they also have these wires that I just showed you that are also about 20 inches long. That's going to give you something on the order of about 40 inches of reach that you can use these with. Now, they do that, uh, they, they provide these as two separate uh, wires so that you can shorten one or the other end uh, before you install it on your layout. They realize that you might not need uh, 40 inches of wire running from the uh, from these. 
You can also solder wires on here to extend it if you need it a bit longer. I wouldn't extend it out more than about maybe four feet, something on that order, uh, because once you get it out too long, the resistance in the wires, and these are only a 34 gauge wire that they're using. So the resistance in these wires is going to dim the brightness of the LED itself. Now, at this point, one thing that you can do with these, as I said, you can shorten these, but what they're made to do is, you're just going to solder these two together, and that's why we got the heat shrink tubing in here. So it does require a little bit of soldering to lengthen the wiring run to what you might need. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 40 inches though uh, for this installation. Now they also sell a roll of wire that you can order separately. I believe it's about 10 meters long of the red and the black wire in case you need to do longer runs. But I will tell you that these are just a 34 gauge wire and you could pick up that uh, here in the U.S. Uh, or other electronic suppliers that might sell you spools of red and black uh, 34 gauge wire. Okay. But for the most part, in a lot of scenarios, I don't think you're going to need much more than about three and a half feet. These circuit boards were originally designed to be used with their control panel kits, and that's why they are designated right and left at each one of the addresses. So there are a total of 12 addresses on here with 24 total sockets. So on their control panels, you can install a red and a green LED to show the route. And the way they work is each one of these two sockets per address, one is one polarity and the other is the other polarity. And they're on all the time. They just have different polarities. So when the switch is thrown one way on the layout, one polarity is on for that route. When you throw the switch the other way, then the polarity on the board changes and this one would come on and be, be, be powered up. So they just switch the polarities of these sockets. They don't switch them on and off. Now that has some interesting applications for uh, structure lighting, which is what we're going to use these boards for. So you could set these up so that you have all of the lights attached to all of these sockets on all the time, or you could set it up so that all of the lights attached to the left designated sockets are on, and then when you throw the switch the other way, the other light sets are on. Now, I'm not sure how you would use that. You might have some buildings you want on during the day, some buildings you want lit up during the night, uh, but for the most part, I think most people are going to want to do these all on at the same time. So that gives you a total of 24 sockets that you can use to light up your buildings, and I will show you how to do the wiring uh, to reverse the polarity so that the lights on both sockets are on all the time. And I went ahead and made up a, uh, a demonstration one here where I've got two LEDs spliced here to one red and black wire and going into a single connector. So I can plug this into one of these outlets and that's going to give me two LEDs on one address. And you can do that, that's not a problem. Like I said, you can do up to three. Now another thing I've done here is, uh, on this particular one right here, I've simply made the connection with the two wires to two wires. So I've got just one LED on this one. However, on this one right here, I have connected, show you this, the two LEDs, but I have reverse wired them. So I connected my two LED red wires to one black wire and my two blacks to the one red and plug that into the socket here. So if you have the red and the black polarity here and then reverse it over here, then they're going to burn continuously. So let me show you that. What I want to do is I'm just going to turn this on. I've got this hooked up to a, a Digitrex Zephyr uh, to provide the power and I'm going to go ahead and throw it on. I know it's going to come up set for position one because that's the default. So, and that's what I've got it plugged into. I have my single LED plugged into uh, one left and I have the reversed LEDs, a pair of them, plugged into one 
right. So let me turn this on and we'll take a look at how they light up. Okay, so I can flip it on and you can see all three lights have come on. This is the single that's attached to one right, or one, one left, and these two are attached to one right. And so I can go over here on my uh, Digitrex and bring up switch mode, address one, and I can toggle these off and back on again. Just using the controls on my Digitrex Zephyr. And you could do the same thing, uh, you could do the same thing on a Digitrex uh, throttle or on a NCE throttle. Any throttle that has the ability to control switches can send accessory address commands and it's just thrown and closed. So you can see these are a nice golden white LED, fairly bright, which is what you need in these structures. Now let me show you how you go about changing the addresses because that's something I'm going to need to do here. Now I've disconnected the uh, LED wires here so that we can do some programming. And what I've done, I've got a Digitrex Zephyr command station providing the power. So this right here, these red and green wires come from the output from the Digitrex command station and they just go into this green screw terminal here. And that's your input connected to normally the DCC power bus on your layout. And it provides power for the circuit board and the lights. And it is a very minimal amount because you got to remember these LEDs, they're only pulling about 20 milliamps. So you can light a lot of these with a very small amount of power. Now, the other things on here, you'll note that there's these large white connector sockets here. This is in case you want to uh, daisy chain several of these boards together. So you could do that and uh, control a number of different uh, structure lighting setups on your layout by just having one connection uh, to the DCC power bus and then daisy chain the output here. The other things that are on here, you will see right here, there's a little small on off switch and that is for turning the power to the board on and off. And then there's these two uh, accessory select buttons, one here and one here. And so in order to get into programming mode, and we're going to, I'm going to program the addresses on here to 9 through 20. And the reason for that is on my Alpha Central control panel that I showed you how to use previously, I'm using addresses 1 through 8 already. So I can use 9, 10, 11, and 12 to control at least the first four addresses on this circuit board. So, we're going to do that for the demo. I can also use the uh, address or the switch controls on a throttle, uh, for a, on a DCC throttle that has the ability to control switch machines. And that will work with any uh, DCC throttle that can, that can control switch machines because these are just using accessory decoder addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. What you do is you hold down this button here and push the slide button on. So you can see it comes up flashing the first digit. So that tells you it's, a, it's ready to program. Now what I want to do is move over to this digit here because I want to program this to a value of 9. So I'll use this button to move across the display and then I'm going to use this button to cycle up to digit 9 here. 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, now I'm going to hold down this position, this button here, until it says yes. And once it says yes, that means that the programming is done and is completed. I'm going to turn it back off and let's plug in some lights now. They go in quite easily. There we go. And I'll bring these lights over here so you can see when I turn them on. I've added another LED to position to left. So let's turn the power on and see how that works. Okay, you can see that uh, the LEDs connected to address 9 are working. I haven't turned address 10 on, so let me try that. Switch 10 is now active on the, uh, on the Digitrex Zephyr. And let's go ahead and toggle. So now we've got five lights lit up on the board. 
off of the board. So we can toggle those. So I've got 10 toggled off. I can go back to 9 and toggle it off. So we've got all of our controls set up. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and install this. I'm going to turn it off. Let's install uh, these lights in one of my uh, structures from the module. And I'm going to use the gas works because that's one that is uh, fairly easy to get to and, and work with. And uh, let me go ahead and bring that over here. And we'll go ahead and do the installation here on the bench top and then move over to the module and do the installation there. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Uh, now you might remember I did a whole series of videos on modeling a gas works, and to remind you, gas works were something that were used from, oh, the early quarter of the uh, 1800s up until oh, the 1950s in the US and the 1960s in the UK. So what I want to do is I want to set it up so that I can illuminate the front windows here, the window, uh, this office building or whatever it is here, and the area in here as well. So what I'm going to do is, let's take a look at the inside. I'm going to put two LEDs here in this section. I'm going to put an LED here in this section and right here, and another one right here in this section. Okay, so let's take this little paper backing off here to expose the adhesive, like that. And I'm going to bend the wire up just a little bit, and take my forceps and reach down in here and attach it to the inside of the roof. Okay. So we got that tucked in there. And I have my Uhu Black Tack putty, that uh, adhesive putty that I'm going to use to stick this stuff in place. So let me get a wad of that out here to work with. Make a little ball of that. And with my forceps, we'll press that into place in here and hold that wire in place. So that should keep that from pulling loose. Let's use the one where I reverse wired it and we'll peel them again. Okay. I'll show you these here in just a minute. Now I'm putting them on the back side of the roof where it's sloping so that the lights will be illuminating towards the front of the building. There. Now one thing, let me point out, that you have to be aware of when you're putting these in buildings, and that is you need to make sure that your building has been painted. If you use a, an unpainted plastic building, sometimes you will get what I call hot spots, and it's the glow from the lights will actually be seen through the plastic itself, and um, that kind of ruins the effect. So uh, if you have not painted the building, you might need to go back and paint the inside walls black in order to prevent that hot spot effect. Okay, so that's going to shoot the light towards, it's on the back roof that slopes to the rear, and that light is going to be focused towards the front of the building. Okay, I've still got two more to do in here. Tell you what, I'm just going to do that off screen and show you in a second. Okay, I've got these installed. Let me see if I can show you. I have uh, one located right here, another one here, one located right in here, and then one here, and one right here. So those you might not be able to see down in there. And again, I've got my black tag holding these wires in place in the corners. So let's go back over to the layout and install this over there. Okay, so just a reminder, this is the location of the gas works itself here, and I've drilled three holes, these are about quarter inch each, just big enough for the uh, sockets and wires to fit through. And I measured these off of the building and marked them, and then just drilled right on through since there was nothing underneath. So now what I'm going to do is bring the building over, 
and we will go ahead and run these wires right on down through the layout. So these are the two that go to the right side of the building. There they go, down the hole. And then we have a pair from the rear of the building. Okay, so we've got the building back in place. The lights are all ready. Now let's take a look here. So for this demonstration, I've set up the board here. I've run two wires from the board to the main power bus underneath of the layout. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those wires that I just installed out and run them up to these connectors. Now later on, once I've got this working and I'm satisfied, I will install this because you'll note that there are four holes here on the corners. I'll just put a couple of screws into those and attach it to one of the cross beams under the layout and then I'll be able to get this completely out of the way and uh, hopefully protected from damage. Okay, this is the light from the right side of the building. I'm going to put it into position 2, which is actually address 10. And this is the single light. We'll get that into position 9 left. And this is the one from the rear. Put that into 9 right. Okay, so they're all set up, ready to go. So let's turn on the uh, button here. Turn on the board. And let me see if things work here. I've got position. This is number 8, so this would be address number 9 should turn some of those lights off. And 10. So all the lights are off. I'm going to turn them back on again. And they came back on. I'll configure, I'll confirm that. So now, let me lower the house lights in here so we can see. So you can clearly see the lights in this section are on. Uh, if you look back, you can see the reflection. There's lights on back in the main section of the building. And I can tell you, it's hard to see it underneath of this overhang of the roof, but the lights are on in that section there. Let's turn these off and back on again for you. So you can clearly see the lights going off and coming back on. In looking at this, I don't see any hot spots at all in the structure, so I'm not getting any light bleed through anywhere. But of course, these buildings were painted with um, a dark red brick color paint uh, before they were put together. So they've got a good coat of paint, so that's going to help prevent any uh, light leakage through them. There you go. Fairly easy uh, installation, and I showed you a couple of tricks along the way that you can use to improve your lighting on your buildings. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, one of the great things about the fall is all of these manufacturers come out with new products to entice us just as we're getting ready to go back into the layouts uh, after Labor Day. And here we are. So, we've seen what Soundtrax has just come up with to entice us as far as the Blue Namis, and now the folks at DCC Concepts have this great new structure lighting kit that you can use on your layout. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there who play with Arduinos and that kind of thing are going to say, well, you can just use those to control it. Yeah, that's one option. But these are essentially plug and play. They only require connecting two wires together, and then you're ready to go. And as I've shown you, you can use them with the Alpha Central control panel setup that I showed you in previous videos. You could use them with your handheld throttle. So they do offer an option for folks who really don't want to get into the rabbit hole of Arduinos and other types of complicated electronic circuitry. Well, that's it for today's video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.